see. Thank you so much. The Adventurer's Guild has been overwhelmed these days. <laughs> no worries at all. We've always valued the strength of adventurers. Given the current situation, it's vital that we all work together. Since we're facing the same enemies, I'll send you the intel we've collected on the Abyss so far. Then we can take a look at how to coordinate our efforts. All right. Thank you so much. Hi, Catherine! It's us! Got any new commissions? Ah, you two have come just in time. I've got some good news. The Pyro Archon has finished assembling her forces and stationed them all across Natlan. Given how the Abyss has ramped up its activities lately, we can no longer afford to act only after receiving news of an invasion. So the Pyro Archon suggested that the Scions of the Canopy and the Adventurers Guild focus on collecting and disseminating intel. That way, we can stay informed of everything that's happening across the land. Once we receive word of enemy activity, we can notify the nearest camp and the stationed forces can take immediate action. Yes, precisely. This should also allow us to focus on gathering information, rather than running around and trying to tackle everything at once. So please also take a chance to relax, you two. You've been working hard these days, and this will be a good opportunity for some well-deserved rest. So that's the plan! Whew, we can finally stop and take a break! Priority now, the more I can wait. <laughs> the movements of the abyss are always unpredictable. There have also been times when it suddenly became more active in the past. The people here generally see it as something like an acute natural disaster. Once the disaster is over, everyone will return to their normal lives. We just all hope that day will be sooner rather than later. All oh, right. Most people have no idea just how bad the situation has gotten in the Night Kingdom. Oh, hey, Kachina! Are you feeling better now? those things. Kachina? After all, you're already a victor of the Night Warden Wars. Ah, yes, so I've heard. 
So young, and yet you've already got quite the reputation. Wait, are, are you outlanders? Yep, we're travelers who just arrived in Natland not too long ago. No, I, I mean, I was aware that you're travelers. It's just no one told me that you're outlanders. No, the only thing she said is that a new hero had pledged himself to the plan. But we'd need to forge an ancient name to ensure he'd be able to return safe and sound. And she did mention that it would be quite difficult to forge an ancient name for them, but at the time, I thought she was just commenting on my skills. But I seem to understand where the uh, true difficulty lies now. <sighs> no, I, I wouldn't go that far. I'm used to it, really. I just uh, need a moment to process things. The Pyro Archon's requests are always difficult to fulfill, and uh, we used to argue a lot. Honestly, it's uh, probably for the better that she didn't bring this up at the time. <sighs> anyway, I can't argue with her if she isn't here, and it'd be pointless to take my anger out on someone else. But whew, just because I understand her rationale doesn't make me any less upset, after all. She must have known that forging an ancient name for an outlander is an impossible task. It's impossible? As you probably know, an ancient name is a symbol of a hero's sparing glory, which grows even richer and heavier as generations of successors inherit it. We forge ancient names by engraving the heroic deeds of an individual who will become the first hero of that particular name. But they were all performed outside of Natlan, correct? Yeah, that's right. Then those deeds haven't been recorded by the Night Kingdom. To take it one step further, even if you had performed heroic deeds in Natlan, as an outlander, your actions still wouldn't have been recorded by our lands. Only memories and experiences that have been acknowledged by the Wyab can be used as a basis for an ancient name. Even the greatest of craftsmen cannot create something out of thin air, you know. That's just how it is. Seems the Wyab don't want just anyone to get a name, huh? Mawika, of all people, should know better than anyone. Yet she still entrusted the task of forging the ancient name to me. Oh, Paimon gets it. Nobody's happy being asked to do the impossible. Ugh, don't remind me. Let's just, uh, focus on how we can pull this off. How to achieve the impossible. Uh, you mean you're already willing to accept the task? Well, what else can I do? What's happened is already done, and it's not like I can outright defy the order of my Archon. If she gave me this order, then she believes the ancient name is an indispensable part of her plan, and that I'll be able to find a way to make it happen. In other words, the order is an affirmation of my abilities. Oh, not only has she accepted the task, but now she's looking for silver linings? The key is getting the Wyab to somehow acknowledge the Traveler's existence and record his heroic deeds. When we were in the Night Kingdom before, we even had a whole conversation with her. If we can talk to her again, maybe we can figure something out together. Well, every tribe has their own Wyab. How do we know if the one you met is indeed the best one for us to talk to? Plus, considering the unprecedented nature of this situation, I have a feeling that the acknowledgement of one Wyab alone would probably not be enough. I don't know. That requires a level of knowledge that I do not possess. We need to find a consultant who's an expert on all things Night Kingdom and Wyab. The first person who comes to mind is Seat Lolly at the Masters of the Nightwind. The one we call Granny Eats Tilly. Oh, we've heard that name before. We used her spirit speaker stone to find Kachina's ancient name. A person who can make something like that must be pretty impressive. I'm sure 
she'd be able to help. Uh, still, she's older now and quite eccentric. It's hard to even book a meeting with her, given that she's constantly holed up in a room and doesn't like to be disturbed. I've heard that to get her help, you have to be extremely patient with her and know how to keep her spirit up. I hate to break it to you, but... Huh. Why is that? I mean, didn't she already help you before? And you even managed to save Kachina. Well, yeah. At the cost of her spirit speaker stone being split into two. <sighs> Great going, Moika. We're already off to a rocky start here. In that case, I guess your only option is to try to emphasize that this is an important order from the Pyro Archon. Hopefully, Seat Lolly would still want to show respect to the Archon. I'll also write you a letter on your behalf. If you can find someone to deliver it and mention some good things about you, then that should help too. Hello. All right, Kanich is a seasoned negotiator. I trust that he'll know the best things to say. Uh, please just give me a moment to write the letter, and we can meet up near the Statue of the Seven later. Sounds good! We'll take a stroll in the meantime. Sorry to put this on you, Kanich. It's just that you're probably the only person who knows how to deal with her. Oh, wait. So, Kachina and the Traveler also know about the plan? Shilonin is one of four that have already been acknowledged. Oh, <laughs> well, then I suppose there's no need to keep any secrets between us. Having companions walk by your side is perhaps the best solace when facing such a bleak reality. Given how the Masters of the Nightwind love to babble about dreams and revelations, they're already a pretty strange bunch to most. I've never met Auroran, but if they consider him the odd one, he's got to be pretty far out there. Huh. Makes sense. But Paimon wonders how Seat Lolly could be the first one to notice Auroran's disappearance if she spends the whole day in her room. Oh, so if I'm following, you mean we'll help her investigate Roron and the captain's whereabouts? breaking the spirit speakers down. Ah, this is a pretty well thought out plan. 
as expected of Molly Poke Nietzsche. Then, uh, yeah, I'll leave my letter to you. Let's hope Seat Lolly can meet at the stadium in two days. Okay, then let's part ways for now. I'll see you in a couple of days. Traveler and Paimon. I have, uh, bad news. Seat Lolly did not reply to our request. Although, I suppose I'm not too surprised. Huh? You mean she didn't even bother to give Kanich a response? Guess she really does have quite the ego, then. Yeah, well, she can be also quite eccentric, though she's one of the most gifted people around. Even the Masters of the Night Wind often struggle to work with her. My guess is that she probably has other reasons for not deigning us with a response. But let's go to the stadium and see if we can meet her there. If we do get a chance to talk to her in person, we can still try to work something out. That's true. Let's go! Buddy. Seems she's just not gonna show up, huh? <sighs> well, we tried to be as considerate as we could, but she's under no obligation to help. That might be true, but this is still a request from the Pyro Archon, right? Shouldn't a subject always answer the call of their Archon? <laughs> a subject? Well, um, if you ask me... I'd say we're all more like friends with the Archon. Yes, Maweka is our leader, but that doesn't mean there's any kind of tall barrier between us and her. The only thing is that she often has very high expectations of us. Huh, so even though she's super powerful, it sounds like she's actually pretty down to earth and easy to get along with. Unlike that old hag Granny eats to Lee, right? Does she think she can ignore us just because she's famous? You all talk about her like she's some kind of huge deal, but she didn't even bother to reply to our letter! Seriously, if she didn't want to come, she could at least let us know! If that's what aging does to you, Paimon never wants to get old! <coughs> oh, really? So, that's how you see me? Who... who's there? Who's talking next to Paimon? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just a disgruntled old hag, right? Ugh, come on, relax. I'm sure my bark's worse than my bite. Huh, Seat Lolly. Wait, you're Seat Lolly? You're Granny Eatsley? Yes, Granny Eatsley. But emphasis on Eatsley, not Granny. Ah, oh, you must know this trope from light novels, surely. They use it all the time. The young man who's actually the oldest person in the room. The girl next door who turns out to be a seasoned veteran. The wise sage who looks like a little kid. Oh, wipe that look off your face. You've seriously never seen an older lady that doesn't look her age? <sighs> okay, well, don't go thinking it's a trick either. See, I'm barely wearing any makeup. Did I forget to mention, she's called Granny, but uh... She's actually pretty young. <laughs> it was an honest mistake. I guess we've just gotten used to it. Um, I'm sorry. So, how old are you actually? What? Uh, how dare you? Don't you know it's rude to ask a lady her age? I, uh, I really didn't mean to offend you. It's just that uh, your case seems really unique. 
Oh, Paimon just wanted to apologize, but now she's putting more and more of her foot in her mouth. Really, Paimon just got a little mad since we thought, well, you were gonna leave us out to dry. Hmm. It was my idea to invite you here, Seat Lolly. So if you're upset, you can just take it out on me. <sighs> All right, I was only joking. I didn't mean to chastise anyone. There's really no need to take all this so seriously. If anything, I'm gonna feel awkward if we keep this going. I received Kanicha's letter and was planning to attend this meeting. Since I had already decided to come, I figured there was no need to draft a reply that simply said, understood. Besides, just showing up is the most important part, no? But of course, it's also natural for people to get held up by one thing or another as they're trying to leave the house. <laughs> it certainly was a bit awkward to see that everyone else had arrived before me. At first, I was thinking of quietly sneaking over, but since you were already here waiting for me, I started to think about how I should phrase my apology, only to hear you all talking smack about me. <sighs> anyway, that's the whole story. Uh... <clears throat> Honestly, it's not like I owed you an explanation, anyway. Huh? What's with that expression? Was she feeling embarrassed just now? When the Masters of the Night win, so they struggle dealing with her. Huh, I wonder if the feeling is mutual. Huh, she seems to be pretty awkward herself. Everything she does and says seems a little forced. Ahem. <coughs> anyway, Shilonen, I heard that you require my help in crafting an ancient name. Correct. The situation isn't like anything we've handled before. Let me explain. Huh, I see. So Mauika has asked you to forge an ancient name for an outlander. Well, that would be a first. And you've also heard all about Auroron. I must say, he's always been a good kid. I can't see him joining the Fatui of his own volition. He must have been coerced somehow. Yeah, that's what we came here to ask you. We'll help bring Auroron back if you help us solve the problems of forging the ancient name. What do you think? Hmm. Uh, I suppose I'll just call you Traveler for now. Traveler, come here. Let me take a good look at you. Hmm. Wealth leads to unending conflicts between people. Yet you alone transcend the value of gold. Baleful thunder and wrathful waves bring terror to mortal hearts. Yet, again and again, you've braved them to find new worlds. A weary yet free soul, even the most verdant leaf in the forest, will pray for your happiness and safe passage. <sighs> Those are all the things that I could see in you. You've experienced far more than even most mortals could dream of. You possess the heart of a sincere hero, along with the conviction to lift a torch above your head and walk headlong into the night. Huh? Don't move. There's something here. Huh? W what thing? Don't scare Paimon! Is the Traveler gonna be okay? Ah, uh, shoo! Ah, uh, that should do it. You've just returned from the Night Kingdom, so some fragments of souls were still stuck to your body. No need to worry. I've just cleared out the last of them. <laughs> Isn't that kind of like having part of a ghost come back with you? Uh, it's nothing as serious as that. If left unattended, the most it could do is stir up some chaos in your mind. And generally worsen your mood. Well, in that case, better to get rid of them. It was nothing. Shilonen, let's follow your proposal. Once you've brought Auroron back, I'll take you to see the Lord of the Night. The Lord of the Night? But don't...
Don't we need to talk to the Wyab of the tribes? Something this important is beyond their jurisdiction. Only the Lord of the Night can decide whether we can grant an ancient name to one who does not hail from our lands. The Lord of the Night is an ancient entity that rules over the entire Night Kingdom, constantly borrowing the power of the Sacred Flame to combat corrosion from the Abyss. Oh, so you're basically saying it's even more powerful than the Wyab of the Tribes. Well, that sort of makes sense, being the Lord of the entire Night Kingdom and all. Uh, not exactly. It's not so much that one's more powerful than the other. Uh, but never mind. That's not important. It would take too much time to explain. Just listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. The Lord of the Night is currently in a deep slumber, and we can only communicate with its consciousness while in a trance. In other words, in a dream. But I will need to prepare a few more things if we are to hold a ceremony to achieve the state of the trance. I'll make a list. Can any of you get everything for me? I can go. It'll probably be a long list, so better leave it to someone who knows all the local vendors. Sounds good! Then we'll go with St. Lolly to track down Auroran! Phew, the Fatui are nothing to scoff at, so please, be careful during your investigation. If you need any help, just come find me. Yep, we'll be sure to play it safe! All right, now it's time for us to catch that brat and bring him back. <sighs> oh, uh, I'm sorry I made you wait earlier. It was actually because I decided to swing by Auroran's place to look for clues. He has always lived alone, and I found a broken jar in his house. There was also something off about his phlogiston aphids, which I assume is because their keeper has been gone for quite some time. And interestingly enough, I saw some slash marks in the house that did not match any of our local weapons. My guess is they were left by Snezhnayan arms. Oh, sounds like the Fatui broke into his house and took him hostage! But why would they kidnap a kid who just spends his days living in the country and raising aphids? He's only in his 20s. What would they want with him? <coughs> That's not to say that I believe he's totally innocent, of course. Since he's the only one who was kidnapped out of everyone in Natlan, he must have done something to attract their attention. <sighs> in any case, we'll get to the bottom of this once we manage to get him back here. I'm truly sorry to put you two through all this trouble with me. But uh, please help me get him back. You can count on us! All right, then let's start by heading to where Auroran was seen last.
Ah, uh, this is the spot. An eyewitness claimed to have seen Auroron speaking to some Fatui soldiers here. I don't know how much you're willing to believe me, but Auroron really is a good kid. I see no reason why he'd suddenly get involved with the Fatui. I'm convinced that what the witnesses saw was actually the Fatui coercing him. Or perhaps trying to extract information. Uh, however, I doubt anyone would believe me, given there are no signs of a fight. Didn't Kaneech say that she's a big name in that land? Feels kind of weird to see her so frustrated and helpless like this. Auroron? Well, he was left at the side of the road as an infant. And the people of the tribe took him in. You could say that everyone had a hand in raising him. He learned a lot from us. And once he reached adulthood, he built himself a house out in the countryside. He spends most of his days growing vegetables and raising aphids. Living off of what he harvests from the garden. <sighs> He's always been such a good kid. He would even get his friends to deliver whole bags of fresh produce to my place. Oh well, let's keep looking. He can answer all of our questions once we find him. He's been raising phlogiston aphids for a long time, and since they were disturbed, they secreted a special type of phlogiston. We can use that substance to track his movements. Let's follow the phlogiston trail. Huh? What trail? Hyman doesn't see anything. Oh, right. I forgot your eyes don't naturally perceive such things. Uh, here, give me your hand. How about now? What do you see? Whoa, Paimon can see it now too! That's right. I used a spell to temporarily transfer a portion of my senses to you. For a short while, you'll be able to see the phlogiston too. Wow, you can even share your senses with us? First time Paimon's heard anything like that. It requires a very rare spell that most people aren't adept at. But don't worry, it's a cinch for me. Between the two of you, it seems the Traveler's senses are a bit stronger than Paimon's. When I held your hand just now, I could sense that you've got a great affinity for Phlogiston. You're extraordinarily gifted. Anyway, we'll need to use our vision now to track down Auroron. Good luck, you two. might say a lot of deep and confusing stuff, but this spell of hers is really something! Uh, what was that? Oh, Paimon was just complimenting you! Really! What does she mean by deep and confusing? As far as elderly shamans go, I'd say that I'm already pretty easy to talk to. Is there any other old hag who's as fluent in the language of the youth as me? Uh, but is my way of speaking still not trendy enough? I've already tried my best to match their speech patterns. But given the looks on their faces just now... Or perhaps I'm still not fashionable enough? But that can't be, right? Uh, don't tell me they're still getting the impression that I'm super old-fashioned. Uh, huh? Was that... Seat Lolly's voice? Ah, uh, 
And now that I think about it, it's a good thing I found some helpers this time. Some things are best done with the help of friends. They appear to be feeling quite confident. Looks like our work will go smoothly. Hey, looks like there's a new camp over there! Let's go take a look. Little brat, I swear. I just hope he hasn't gotten himself into any real trouble. Hmm. Yep. Judging by Paimon's experience as a guide, it definitely looks like people set up camp here. Uh, wait. The phlogist in here is a bit odd. Let me see. A small shape here. Could it be... some sort of symbol? This is a distress signal for the Masters of the Nightwind. Only someone from our tribe would recognize it. So Auroron was indeed being threatened. We've got to find him. Fast. Uh, leaving such a subtle mark implies that he was trying to be discreet. In other words, he was probably under the Fatui's watch. Uh, if they notice us... We can just charge in and fight them to the death. But... Oh, but what if my darling grandson is also there? I can't have him caught in the crossfire. Uh, no, I've got to be careful. Otherwise he'd get hit as well. Uh, how annoying. Uh, no. No, I've got to stay calm and keep my composure. Staying here too! Uh, wait a second. The phlogiston around here is jumbled up. I can also smell a mix of elements in the air pyro, electro, and some other elements as well. Kanich told us that you were super amazing. No wonder you can sense so many more things than us. Huh. <laughs> it's about time that little brat said something nice about me. There are signs of a struggle here. Judging from what's left on the scene, there must have been a fight. But after that, the factions seem to have gone their separate ways. Both the phlogiston and the elemental traces in the air support that. Do you still remember the little mark we found before? Paimon's thinking, what if Auroron wanted to leave another distress signal, but was caught by the Fatui? Given there are two signals leading from here, we should split up as well. I'll take this direction, and leave the other one to you. Let's meet up again later. Roron, What the heck were you doing? It's one thing to trouble me, but now I had to bring other people into this as well. Ah, oh, you little brat. 
and off she goes. Traveler, did you hear all of that as well? Once Seat Lolly left, that voice went away as well. Paimon even tried calling her name inside Paimon's head, but there was no response. So you were thinking the same thing. Paimon also thought that if we could hear what she was thinking, then she could probably also hear what we were thinking in our heads. She did say that she was quite adept at this spell, and it doesn't sound like she's had any trouble with it in the past. Huh, maybe we're a special case and can hear her thoughts as a side effect. <laughs> if you think about it, she's really got a lively inner world. It paints quite a different picture from Paimon's first impression of her. Carbon waves! Paimon sees some traces here. Let's follow them and see if we can find anything up ahead. Find something? Huh. So we can't tell where Aurora might have gone from here. That's weird. The phlogiston trail suddenly stops. We can't make anything of these footprints either. But he can't have just evaporated into thin air, right? We know he wasn't alone. He had all those fatui with him. So, you can hear the sounds of the wind from beneath the earth. I'm very sorry, but please do not move. I have no desire to hurt you. I apologize that our first meeting has to take place like this. It's just that you're much like one of those animals with ears that perk up as soon as it senses danger in their environment. And given your combat proficiency, I would not have been able to gain an advantage over you if you were anywhere else in the world. However, you're now in the Night Kingdom, a familiar domain to the masters of the Night Wind. <sighs> Hello, Traveler. I'm Auroron, the one you've been searching for. Ah, the Fatui's custody. I see, so even Granny has told you that I was coerced by the Fatui. <laughs> I'm afraid you've been brought here by a lie, like a false omen in the lingering smoke. My friend and I only left those traces to lure you here. Deceiving you was never our true intent, however. It was simply the fastest and most feasible way for us to set up a meeting. Greetings, traveler from afar. Be careful with this traveler. His soul is temporarily restrained by us and it appears to have become more fragile in the process. It's taking all my concentration to hold on to him. It was I who tasked Auroron with leaving the traces to lead you here, and I who used the Master's ritual to bring your soul to the Night Kingdom. I've heard much about you from the past encounters you've had with my colleagues. Given the present situation in Natlan, I would like to sincerely request a formal meeting with you, in person. I will use the opportunity to explain my goals and motivations to you as well as why I mistrust Malwika, the Pyro Archon. I believe there is little reason for you to blindly follow her plan. 
If you would like to hear our intel, then find us to the east of the stadium. But remember, not a word of this to anyone. I would like to avoid any further conflict. You will see me again once you return to reality. No matter what I say, please, help me keep this a secret. This is all to avoid dragging Granny into this conflict. Why are you sitting on the ground? Are you okay? See, Lolly! He froze for a moment and then just collapsed to the ground! Could it have been those leftover remnants from the Night Kingdom? Do you have any itches or pain anywhere? Uh, don't worry. We can take a short break. Sorry, I know I asked for your help. But had I known you were feeling unwell... I wouldn't have taken you on this trip with me. If you're feeling sick, you should just say so. See, Lolly should be able to... Uh... Exercise any ghosts or weird stuff that you picked up in the Night Kingdom. A seasoned traveler must know the importance of not pushing yourself beyond your limit. If you need anything from me, just say the word. In any case, let's take a bit more time to rest now. Need to be more careful next time. Feeling better yet, Traveler? All right, let's get ready. I followed my phlogiston trail earlier to a stronghold guarded by soldiers. I have a feeling that Auroron is probably being held inside. Oh, so it's close by. Then let's head over right away. Well, I recruited you to be my helper, which means we're in this together. Like the wind and the clouds, we either move as one or not at all. But if you want to make it up to me, then just be sure to fight extra hard when the time comes. Let's ride! Look over there. Huh? Paimon thinks she sees someone in the middle of the camp. That's Auroron. So he really was taken by the Fatui. All right, we'll take the lead. Hmm. Hey, quit daydreaming. Don't you have work to do? I cannot see the sun. Uh, what? Without the sun, I cannot see the truth. You are currently blocking the light, so I must beseech you to move aside. Huh? Uh, okay, Mr. Philosopher. That's enough mumbo-jumbo. Wow. I'm going to rip that guy's head right off. See, Lolly's struggling to control her temper now. <sighs> Are you ready? Let's go kick their butts. On my count. 
three, two, one! Still trying to resist? You've got no idea who you're up against! I will have order! This one's got your name on it! Umbrella warfare, I guess! call her Granny. And greetings to you too, Gramps. What did you just call him? Gramps? Is that not right? You're Granny's friend, are you not? You seem to be approximately the same age as her, so I figured you've got to be Gramps. How many times have I told you? It doesn't work like that. There are a lot of people who look about the same age as me. You can't go around calling everyone Gramps or Granny. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He's not a child, is he? Don't tell Paimon he's one of those people who look like an adult but are actually only eight or nine years old. Oh, your words have pierced my heart like a thorn vine. Given how hard those thorns are to remove, I may just need to find a pair of tweezers. Why are you so upset? You can just say yes or no. Of course I'm not a child. It's just... Granny always taught me to show gratitude where it's due. And since the Masters of the Night Wind raised me collectively, I basically see everyone above a certain age as an elder I should look up to. Exactly. Uh, but if you keep that up, then everyone's going to be your senior. And do you think saying all of this is going to save you from a scolding, Auroron? <clears throat> Haven't I told you a hundred times since you were a kid? Heed the three warnings! Be wary of beasts prowling around, scammers looking for their next victim, and strange people who appear out of nowhere. Oh, so you do remember and you just chose to ignore them! I always knew that living on your own was going to get you into trouble sooner or later. But getting kidnapped? <laughs> that really takes the cake. You won't always be able to rely on other people coming to your rescue, you know. You're just lucky we got here when we did. Or we might be launching another search and rescue operation to find out where they put your severed head. I'm sorry, Granny. I'll be more careful next time. Next time? <laughs> oh, good one. You think there'll be a next time after this? Not a chance. Oh. <sighs> they didn't hurt you, did they? No, they just asked me a lot of questions about Natlin's terrain and made me draw a map of the ley line distribution. Okay, now answer me honestly. Were you the one who helped the captain escape after his battle with the Pyro Archon? Yes. So why did you do it? Because... Because they said they would need my help from there on out. They also said that if I refused, they'd just come to you, Granny, and they'd already figured out a way to make you do their bidding. Hey! I'm no ordinary Granny! Would they really dare to come after me? And you! Did the gods give you a brain just for you to not use it? Did you really believe everything they said at face value? And not stop to think? Ah, oh, 
Thankfully, the Pyro Archon only asked that we find the mysterious individual from the Masters of the Nightwind and didn't slap your name on a wanted poster. Don't think for a second that she doesn't know what's happening. Even if the truth that you see will soon manifest into reality, there is still no need to preemptively panic. Have you forgotten the words that I've taught you? I'm sorry. Ugh, forget it. We can submit the details of this camp and the defeated Fatui as evidence of your innocence. Let's clean this place up and get back to the city. Auroron, you better remember this lesson well and seriously reflect on your actions. Also, once we return to the city, come to the speaker's chamber with me. I'll need you to explain everything. Sounds good. Should I bring some of my homegrown vegetables as well? Your... vegetables? Yes. I grow a lot of fresh produce in my garden. I hope the Pyro Archon won't be too picky about the selection. Ugh, now's not the time to be thinking about that! If you do come face to face with the Pyro Archon, the first thing you should do is... Recite the three warnings. Huh? Ugh, no! You should emphasize that you were not in cahoots with the Fatui! How exactly did the Masters raise this guy? Oh. Right. I see. So Auroron came to the captain's rescue because he promised to help him in exchange for Seat Lolly's safety. That's right. I'm sorry. Now that you know Auroron was only trying to protect another member of his tribe, could I ask you to petition the Pyro Archon for her forgiveness? We'll give her a full report. We'll let you know once she's reached a decision. Will I need to stay here? Technically, yes. But if Miss Seat Lolly is willing to serve as your guarantor, then we can release you from custody. Ah, uh, sure. I'd be happy to do that. I don't have any more time to waste here. I still have other things to do. Understood. Thank you very much. Mr. Auroron! Please report back to the Speaker's Chamber as soon as you've received notice of the Archon's decision. I understand. Thank you. And thank you too, Granny. Huh. Well, at least you won't need to hide your face anymore! Traveler, Paimon, thank you very much for your help. And don't worry, I haven't forgotten about my side of the deal. Once Auroron is settled, I'll go talk to Shilonan and get started on forging an ancient name for you. Oh, thank you! You scratch my back, I scratch yours. It's as good as done. You can just go twiddle your thumbs or something while you wait for the good news. Bye for now. Come with me, Auroron. We've got to find you a place to stay for the night. Goodbye, Gramps. you telling her about this. Paimon will support your choice no matter what, so if you want to go, we can go together. We still have another whole day before the meeting, so we'll just meet with them when the time comes. <laughs> 